Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the Bitcoin miner stocks and why I think it's more important to pay close attention to these more now than ever and also a massive winning day that we had on futures. So with that being said, let's get it. So what am I talking about when I say uh, important in terms of the uh, Bitcoin miners? Well, basically, there's two reasons for this. Number one, there's a news catalyst that recently came out that um, has major implications for the Bitcoin miners. And number two, although this was probably pretty well known for a while, but we just found out about it. And number two, uh, the timing for the miners to start ripping to the moon could be literally right. Not exactly right now, but pretty close. So. Um, I'm not going to pull the Bitcoin chart up because you guys, we've already gone over this ad nauseum on this channel. You guys know roughly about the time that Bitcoin started busting to new all-time highs in the last cycle when the having events had been, so on, so on, when the peak was. But uh, an important thing that I want to point out here is you guys know that Bitcoin back in November of 2020 broke to its all-time highs. When it started doing that, immediately after that, Mara ran up to its all-time highs. It went from roughly about $2 to $57 to a massive move. That's like a 25, 26X. And then of course here on the second larger peak, this was the November 2021 peak for Bitcoin when Bitcoin hit 69K. So we'll take a look at that. And um, we're actually going to go through all these miners. So you guys can kind of see, or well, not all of them, but I would say a handful of them. So you can kind of see the similarities. So uh, November 2020, Bitcoin broke all-time highs. Riot went from 570 to about $78 a share. So a massive increase, roughly about like, I think a 12, 13X, something like that, 15X, somewhere in there. Uh, so a huge explosion to the upside. It topped out roughly about the same time the Bitcoin topped out. And then, of course, you have another peak over here in November on Bitcoin's uh, second peak. HUD 8, very similar. Um, so as you guys can see back here in November, December 2020, uh, you can see the miners were getting ready to ramp up right as Bitcoin broke its all-time highs. And HUD 8 went from $5 to the Bitcoin's first peak. It went from $5 to $65, so 13x. And then on the second peak, it went even higher, so it went up to 82 and this is in correlation with Bitcoin's tops and uh, the break of previous all-time highs. So BTBT, uh, very similar. You guys can see it kind of pulled back here as Bitcoin was going up. And then we just had this absolute moonshot here, just this crazy green candle. You see this thing right here? It went from $6.5 to $23 in one week. It did like a 4X in a single week. So massive move here. Uh, this thing went up pretty much around the time that Bitcoin was about to peak or very similar to it. And it started ripping as soon as uh, Bitcoin broke previous all-time highs. That was the 2017 highs. Um, so Cypher, very similar story, although this one kind of sold off massively afterwards, which is uh, kind of a bit odd because the other charts show kind of the opposite. They were at lows and then they went to highs, whereas this thing was at highs and then went to lows. But um, I mean, it is what it is. You know, the 80% uh, sell-off in Bitcoin probably had some pretty bearish effects on this. That's why it looks like that. But the point being is you can see that obviously Cypher was created at the start of the bull run. Bitcoin broke its all-time highs in November. We had this push up here from uh, $9 to $13. And then again in November from, or sorry, not November, September. So before the peak of the bull run, this thing topped out and then dumped. Uh, not exactly sure why, but I mean, it really doesn't matter. The point is it's more undervalued than it's ever been. I think this thing, this particular one did not get to reach its, reach its full potential in the previous bull run. <clears throat> and as a result of that, I think this thing could have a lot more upside than it appears to have this time around. I could, I would say this thing probably could eight to 10 X easy if you ask me. So we're going to go down here to Bitcoin, take a look at Bitcoin real quick. As you guys can see, Bitcoin is on the verge of making a new all-time high. It, technically speaking, already has. So um, we will actually, actually, if I just kind of like zoom in here, you guys can see like on the wick, the peak was almost exactly 69,000. So we're going to scroll over to the hourly chart here. 
Uh, I would have to really, really go back in time for this on the hourly chart for you guys to see this, and it would take a while. But as you guys can see, this wick top here was higher than the previous peak. Um, so if we actually go back here, go back to the weekly, and we'll go back to the 2017 to 2020 cycle peaks. So you guys can see on the wick high on Bitcoin, it hit 19,800 back here. But what did we see? Uh, basically, what we saw was that Bitcoin had like this push up, right? So it pushed up here. It actually, if we really, really zoom in here, we got to really zoom in to see this. You guys can see it went $100 above the previous peak, okay? So instead of 19,800, it went to 19,900. Had kind of a similar flash crash like what we saw yesterday. And then boom, just absolutely took off to the upside. And when Bitcoin broke its 2017 highs, what did the Bitcoin miners do? They started moonshotting. So uh, this is the first key metric I want to point out to you before we get into the charts. So we'll go back here. Um, the second thing I want to point out to you guys is BlackRock. So BlackRock is a major shareholder in four of the five largest US-based Bitcoin miners. So I'll leave this in the description for you guys down below. I don't want to get too heavy into it, but as you guys can see here, they have ownership in Riot, Mara, Cypher Mining, which is, and HUD8, which is HUD8 and Cypher. We have both of those. Uh, Terra Wolf, which I'm not sure what that is, but that's among the list. If scroll down here. You guys can see they have 6% in both Mara and Riot, uh, less than 1% in Cypher and 2.28% in Wolf. Uh, this statement down here is a little concerning to me. Um, it says this current position also make, makes BlackRock Funds Advisors a, a major member of the Bitcoin Mining Council, a lobbyist group for the Bitcoin mining, in, mining industry in the U.S. If you guys know anything about lobbying in Congress, that's generally when very wealthy people show up to try to, um, I don't want to use the word bribe the politicians, but kind of uh, get them to give them some get the politicians to give them some kind of special interests or to try to um, show a particular agenda so this is a little sus if you ask me uh it would appear it would appear uh words unspoken here that blackrock with their spot bitcoin etfs and having a stake in the miners that they may be trying to control bitcoin and the network i can tell you all right now that's not going to happen. Okay, it doesn't matter how big BlackRock is; they will never have control ever over Bitcoin or the Bitcoin miners or cryptocurrency. Okay, it doesn't matter how much damn Bitcoin they buy; they're never going to have control of it. I can tell you that right now because cryptocurrency is a global asset class. It is not limited to one country. It is not limited to one company. It is not. It's not okay. Crypto as a whole is bigger than the S&P 500, okay, potentially bigger than the S&P 500, bigger than basically any index, any bank, any government in the world because it's not limited to anyone. It's available to everyone. Anybody that has a phone or access to the internet, even if they don't have a bank account, can buy crypto, okay? Well, I shouldn't say if they don't have a bank account, but they can buy crypto. You see my point. So it is impossible for BlackRock to own and control Bitcoin and crypto. It's not going to happen. I can tell you right now. So we're going to get into our position. So we closed out a couple of these options trades because um, Cypher was just ripping to the moon. And because of the timing of where Bitcoin is in correlation to the minor stocks, if the minor stocks start ripping, we don't want to have to part with our shares for um, less than we think we can make in profit. So... Uh, the share count that we have on HUD 8 is the same. You guys can see that we massively increased BTBT here. So now we have 400 shares. Uh, we have 300 shares of Cypher. And of course, we have 300 shares of SoundHounds. So, you know, that's kind of all that. We're considering actually adding another 100 shares to both HUD 8 and Cypher, although not just yet. We'll have to wait and see how things play out. So, with that being said, let's get into the charts of the miners. So uh, the next levels for Mara would basically be where we're at now. So 29 to 33 in resistance and then 52 to 57 before the peak. Um, I would say now is as good a time as any to get into the miners, uh, not financial advice, but if Bitcoin's about ready to break all time highs, these things are going to absolutely fly. 
Uh, we told you that there is similar correlation with the grayscale trusts. And I mean, just look at these moves today, okay? 20% on LTCN, 40% on PCHG. This was after the flash crash, very similar to the last time Bitcoin was about to break its all-time highs. It popped its head above the high, okay? Made a little tiny baby new all-time high, then had a flash crash. Same thing back in 2020 that we just saw yesterday. And then if it repeats, Bitcoin could be going to new all-time highs potentially today or tomorrow. And we, we've told you guys with the correlation that the grayscale trusts and the Bitcoin miners will fly to the moon as soon as Bitcoin busts through its all-time highs. It could be as soon as Bitcoin busts through its all-time highs that we can see these massive moves. So you guys can see all these gainers here today on the grayscale trusts. We didn't really see much of that over the last six months. So this should be a pretty strong indication that they're probably really going to start moving up pretty heavily from here. Um, because, I mean... It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to see it. I would say that this is a pretty strong indication that there will be much higher highs to come soon. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish up the miners real quick. So if we take the measured move from where we are currently, uh, your profit targets could be 31%, 49%, 136%, 162%. Uh, because Bitcoin's probably going to go to new all-time highs, I would say that Mara could realistically go from anywhere from 100 to 150 dollars a share on this cycle peak. That is absolutely a possibility. Um, so Riot Platforms, we'll draw another rough uh, kind of resistance zone in here in case it breaks the one that it's at. Uh, but keep in mind these things don't usually start flying until Bitcoin breaks its all-time highs. Okay, so Bitcoin hasn't done that yet, and until it does, well, I mean they're, they're still cheap. Let's just put it like that. So current price, roughly about $12, pretty cheap. If you ask me, there's major support down here at roughly $10, so you're not far off the mark. Uh, you get your resistance at $18.70 and $21, and then $41 and $46 respectively. So we'll do the measured move here. Uh, minimum profit target, 52%, so much greater than Mara. Uh, 76%, 227%, and roughly about 280% respectively. Uh, the previous all-time high on this thing was $80. Again, if Bitcoin goes to new all-time highs, which is it's pretty much a guarantee at this point, I wouldn't say 100%, but with the spot Bitcoin ETFs, it's I'm pretty confident Bitcoin's going to hit at least 150 to 200,000. So uh, with Riot, you could see anything, I would say, from maybe 130 to $200 a share is not out of the question. Uh, HUD 8. So this is one that we really like a lot. Uh, don't ask us why, but we just have a really good feeling about this one. So it is still currently in support. So your resistance is going to be between 1750 to 2260. And then above that, 2850 to uh, 3260 ish per share. So we'll do measured moves on that. Uh, you got roughly about 90%, um, 145%, 207%. And 258% respectively. Keep in mind that out of all these Bitcoin miner stocks, this is the only one that's based in Canada, but you can buy it on US exchanges. So um, from current price to the peak, you're looking at a 10X or a little bit more than a 10X at this point if you just simply bought and hold at these levels. Uh, I would say that HUD 8 probably is going to surpass this peak most likely, and it will probably shoot to somewhere between. Uh, you know what? Let's actually bust out the fibs on this one because I'm really curious. So let's uh, see if we can get a measured move on this. So basically, okay, so from that swing high to, yeah, that, that's not going to be accurate. Let's uh, let's actually look at something else here. So um, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's let's start with this. So if I can, if I can figure out which tool I want to use here. So, uh, yeah, so we'll do the Fibonacci bullish retracement here. So the, obviously you guys can see it lines up pretty nicely with the all time high there at the 4.236. Um, if you guys are interested to know how this fib tool works and you are traders, let me know and I will do what I can to help you out. Uh, but if we measure it from this local peak, this local peak back here, you guys can see that the profit target is much higher. 
So just to get to the 2.618, which is possible, $116, uh, 3.618, 160, and then obviously way up there, 180. If we measure it from the absolute peak to the absolute bottom, uh, you can see this kind of gets a little ridiculous at this point. I would say 2.618, somewhere between 1.618 and 2.618 is probably going to be more than realistic. So as much as 140 to 218 dollars on this particular Bitcoin miner. So BTBT, BT, we're going into this one now. This is one that we hold more heavily. Again, from the current price to the all-time high, you're looking at already roughly about an 11 to 12 X. And I mean, Bitcoin's going to new all-time highs, so we suspect these probably will too. So current price 235, resistance four dollars to 470. And then all the way up here, which in my opinion is probably the next level, would be $12.40 to about 14 and a half bucks, I would say. So we'll do the measured move on this. Uh, 67 to 96%. And then obviously a monstrous 405 to almost 500%. Uh, I believe we still have yet to do ciphers. So. Um, Current price 363, uh, resistance is 480 to 550, and then of course 950 to 10 dollars. Uh, we'll do more fibs on these as the, as they move higher in price to kind of give you guys a more realis a realistic expectation of what a potential top could be. Um, actually, <clears throat> yeah, that's the wrong tool. So 36% uh, to 49%, and then. 156% uh, to 173%. Uh, the all-time high, as you guys can see, is way up here at 15 bucks, so roughly about a 5x from the current price. Uh, we're not going to cover coin and uh, MSTY in this video. We're actually going to do a yield max underlying video uh, early next week, so we'll cover these two in that one. Um, but current price on BitF 264, resistance 290 to about 350 a share. And then I would say your next level of resistance probably going to be closer to these all-time highs. That's where a lot of volume was, and a lot of uh, a lot of candlesticks, a lot of action. So all-time high is roughly about nine dollars and nine-ish dollars, eight something, nine something, somewhere in there. So we'll do the measured move on this. Um, you could be looking at anywhere from fifteen to let's say about forty-ish percent to as much as 163 to roughly about 260%. So still pretty good move. Not as good as uh, BTBT, HUD8, and Cypher, but still pretty good if you ask me. So that covers the miners. Now let's go ahead and get into the futures. Whoops, wrong thing. So as you guys can see, we had a massive day today. So we made almost $1,500 in futures. So we're going to skim through these real quick. Uh, we'll basically just go over here. We did use some fib tools on this, but because this video can only go on so long, we're not going to get super deep into that. So kind of what happened here is we just, um, so I'm trying to remember here. So we got short, got closed out, uh, stopped out because of this kind of weird price action. Got, been, got back in long when we got this candle confirmation above the uh, EMAs here. And then we had a nice nine point move up, which on two contracts of the Russell is it basically it's a hundred dollars for every point move. So, you know, a hundred dollars times nine points is 900 bucks. Uh, then we got short here and we covered on a fib retracement move for about an eight point profit here. So uh, all in all, if we had not gotten stopped out, that by itself would have been about seventeen hundred dollars in profit. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at oil, we did not actually get any of this move this morning because uh, we were kind of waiting for it to pull back between the EMAs. This never happened. It just kept on ripping. And we don't usually start trading until roughly around the open. As you guys can see, the price was already massively overextended, so we didn't want to trade it. Um, so I believe we tried to get long here, and then we eventually did get stopped out. Uh, so we got in 80.06, uh, probably a little high, but uh, we were kind of expecting a bounce because it was already overextended. As you can see, it barely touched the top EMA. So it made sense to get in there. Uh, unfortunately, it kept dumping. And then we got in here and closed all the way down here um, at just, just shy of $79. So that was roughly about, I think, a 70-ish, 65, 70 tick move somewhere in there. Uh, once again, on a Fibonacci retracement of the potential target move. 
So really, really solid day in futures. It's been quite some time actually since we've made this in this much in one trading session. But the sad part about this whole thing is we could have actually made a lot more money in the Europe to the pre-market session. And uh, yeah, we were asleep at that time. So uh, that kind of sucks. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you all later. Peace.